Hey everybody, welcome back to Man Bites Film. My name is Lewis. Like always, we're going to be reviewing three films today. The main review is going to be for Victoria. This is a German-French uh, combined effort and this film is fucking phenomenal. I mean, this shit is run, Lola, run, fast-paced, love this shit type of thing. You just, it's like uh, very exact... The, the best, best example I could think of, Mad Max Fury Road, like that type of thing. It slows down at certain points, but considering this film was all shot in one take, that just totally blew my mind. This thing has about six or seven different locations, and it travels from location to location by car, by, by a motorcycle, walking. I mean, they have shootouts. They have all these intricate scenes, and this was all done in one take. I can't even phantom how hard this must have been for this filmmaker. And this is only his third feature film that he's actually worked on fully. He wrote and directed this film. And this man's level of expertise in this film is something like a d normal director would have after seven, eight, 10 films under his belt and this guy was showing expertise in establishing character establishing emotional connection with the characters and just all this raw awesomeness in this film i mean basically the whole story let me give you the boilerplate of it it follows this girl she exits a club and she's basically just trying to have fun for one night she's recently moved to germany from France, and, from Spain rather, sorry. And um, she is trying to find a good time, hang out, have fun with some new people that are interesting. It's a very European film. So you have to put your mindset in the style of a European person. Um, you can't watch this as an American because you won't understand what the hell's going on and how they have this emotional connection already. It, it's, it's very odd in that sense to Americans because of that. But, it, she encounters this group of, of uh, four guys outside of the club and they start hitting on her like lying about oh you know this is our car you know this is our car this is you know this is it and they're just sitting on top of the car and she's like uh, hold on a second what the hell you guys don't even have the fucking keys to the car yet you guys this is your car uh, what the fuck yeah that's bullshit so basically she encounters the other main character which is a compulsive liar but it's so apparent to her that it just kind of becomes his character and it just unfolds in this very odd dynamic between them two. And they, I would say that they have a romantic connection, but I don't think so. I don't think it's a romantic connection. I think it's more of a brother and sister type of connection. And I thought it was very well done. It, establishes it slowly and honestly it felt very genuine very very realistic and the fact that it was so easily displayed to us it wasn't pushed on us how these characters are anything like that the the what do you call it exhibition of the of the characters is very realistic it's very subtle it's very I can't even pinpoint the word for it. I, I would say it's honest. It's actually how people connect with each other. And I thought that was fucking awesome. I hadn't seen a film like that in a very, very long time. And these guys just, they, they did a great job with it. It's extremely entertaining. It's extremely technically entertaining. And this is a film that you can watch with anybody. It's a European film, but it's actually an English dialogue because she's Spanish and then they're German, the only common language is English because everybody knows English. So, you know, it just became the, the, the go-to language between them two. And I really liked the characters a lot. They, they have a thing about them that stays with you, which is very rare in films nowadays. After you finish watching it, you're just like a throwaway character and you just forget about them completely. After this film, I wanted to know what happened to each of the characters after. 
I wanted to know the backstory. I wanted to know more about them, which is very interesting because they kind of explore a new style of filmmaking. The fact that it was all done in one take. I read a little bit further into the background of it and the director actually shot this three different times, okay? And he ended up choosing the middle take. Since this is an hour and a half long film, you can imagine it was an hour and a half long straight of shooting. And all these intricate details, a shootout, a chase scene, all these different things, and all the lines that the actresses and actors had to memorize, I mean, it was awesome. And the actors did such a good job with covering up blemishes, mistakes, things like that. There was one scene where he actually calls the, the restaurant that he was going to something that he wasn't supposed to. And he, he kind of laughed at himself a little bit and he was like, oh, fuck, I can't believe I messed up. You know, that line out of all things, so stupid. But he catches himself and he keeps going. And then also in one of the scenes, they take a detour in the wrong direction. And this is all behind the scenes and this is all like stuff that you find after the fact. It's not something that you really see in the film, but it's very interesting. And they actually took a detour in the wrong direction. They went down the wrong road. So again, this is all one take. So when they had to reach a certain location, they had to reach that certain location because all the people for that particular scene are there. They can't just go to wherever the fuck and cut and then go to that scene. They can't do that. There's no, no, oh, what do you call it? No way that they could just cut it like a normal film. There's no magic in it, okay? It's all one take. And they cover it up and they make it so natural and it makes them so nervous, the characters in this one scene. Excellent. You felt what these characters felt. You felt the emotions. You felt the rush that these guys felt while they're doing the, the heist. You felt the rush of when they're running, the being chased, all these different things. And you feel the emotional connection when they're ta just talking, which is amazing. Love that. So that's my review for this film. It's currently streaming on Netflix. It's called Victoria. And I give this an eight out of 10 because it is phenomenal watch, okay? Please watch this movie. You're not gonna regret it. And it's an excellent, easy watch for any audience, really. Uh, just don't give children really under 13, 14. I'd say that's the cutoff point. So if you have children younger than that, watch that on your own. But that, it's a phenomenal film. Please check that out. And now we're gonna go into our feature artist, which this is actually one of the members of the band is a friend of mine, or former friend of mine, acquaintance, I guess, from film school. And I love these guys when he introduced me to their music. They are phenomenal. They're called Modern Age and they are great. So I hope you guys enjoy this uh, feature band. And this is a local artist from Miami.
guys. I hope you guys really, really liked the, the feature artist this week. Modern Age is very new, new style. One of my favorite bands of all time is Interpol. And you'll see me wearing the shirt all the time. And that is the style that I like. And these guys are phenomenal in doing that style. I really like them a lot. So please support them. Check them out locally. Uh, go onto their website. Uh, I'm going to link it down below as well. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now we're going to be reviewing Before I Disappear. This is a Sean Christensen uh, film. And I give this a 4 out of 10. This is his first feature film. And you could tell. I mean, he had a great story, great premise, great characters. But it falls kind of short. It, there's something missing of it. There's missing a personality to it. It's missing some type of emotional connection that is not there in the story. It's not the characters, it's not the actor's fault. It's the directing and the story itself, the actual screenwriting that, that affected this film. Um, I think it's because of his lack of experience that he was not able to do that. And it's a hard thing to do, but this film, it was so good and the premise is so well like established throughout the film, but missed that connection and that's just a lack of experience and I can't do any better than that I really can't so I gave this a 4 out of 10 but but this director I will be watching out for because he shows phenomenal uh, what do you call it future films that he's gonna do are gonna stand out and he's he does this type of dark romantic comedy in this film is very uh, night shifty style and I thought it was great but it just lacked that emotional connection that I needed in the film and that's just my personal choice I think a lot of people will enjoy this film especially uh, film students that know how much it takes to, to create a film they will see this and they'll enjoy it for what it is so please check this out this is streaming on Netflix as well um, before I disappear again and the next one, a positive review is Bone Tomahawk. Holy shit, this film was fucking awesome. I mean, this was so great. It was Craig Zegler's um, first film and it, actually, I'm sorry, correction, second film. And he does such a fucking awesome job creating this world that it's basically a Western, that these Indians are, are carno, uh, carnivores and they're outsiders to the Indian tribes in themselves. And they somebody desecrates one of their, their burial centers or something like that, I don't know what the fuck that was, but somebody desecrates it, so they go into the village and they kidnap somebody, a few people actually. And these guys gather the, the villagers and they go hunting after them. It's very much like a monster movie type of style. And they go hunting after the, the Indians. And these guys are like, they get beaten down. They get completely dropped down. But, oh my God, the adventure that they go through. It was like something out of a Tom Sawyer book. I mean, you felt the emotional character, the emotional uh, connection with the characters, not like the previous film. You feel everything that these characters feel you follow and you fall in love with their stories you see the backstory of them each of them and each single one has a completely different personality which is awesome um the acting is superb i mean superb there is a scene there in exchange with the the sheriff that is fucking hilarious they're talking about soup and they're like, oh, this thing stinks. What the fuck is that? And he's like, it's soup. And it's a very sarcastic, witty humor to the style of, of Kevin Smith, but not so grotesque and very true to, to the Western style. And it just has fun characters. And then you get to the, to the Indian part. And the Indian part is crazy okay this thing it, it's taking gore to another level i mean it's the 
board to a whole other level. I mean, it was great because they showed a lot of shit that I've never seen before. So if you haven't seen this, please check this out. This is streaming on Amazon. It's not on Netflix, unfortunately, but it's also on Redbox. And you know, you can find coupons for Redbox and everything and you can get it pretty easily. And it's a great watch. It is a phenomenal watch. I gave this one a seven out of 10. And the only reason I gave it a seven out of 10 is because it slows down towards the middle and it gets kind of tedious towards the middle. So the beginning and the end are phenomenal, but that middle part, it just, it takes a while to get past. So that's why I gave it a seven instead of any higher than that. So please check this out. Next week, we are going to be reviewing some other films that are very unique and I'm taking suggestions from uh, certain viewers and stuff like that to, to review. And I will be reviewing those films very, very, very soon. I guarantee you, it's just a while before I can get a hold of that from Netflix and all these other guys. So I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you guys next Friday. Like always, my name is Lewis and this is Man Bites Film.